Welcome back to the NATO Public Forum YouTube studios. I'm Jack Kelly from TLDR News, and I'm joined now by Gary Kasparov. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'd like to start with something you mentioned in your appearance on the main stage earlier, where you dismissed talk of escalation by Putin as hot air. With this in mind, do you think that NATO should provide a clear path for membership for Ukraine at this summit, or would that be a risk? No, there will be no risk, because escalation could happen only as a result of weakness. Never in history, and also we can look at uh, 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 Putin's um, history as well as early dictators. So it's, it's the dictator's feats on weakness. Mm -hmm. Any hesitation, any delay, uh, 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 any procrastination sends a message that a uh, dictator could do more. And, uh, and uh, 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 the opposite is also correct. The strengths, mm -hmm. clear message, Ukraine must win. And, and as a result of this victory will be um, admitted. Mm -hmm. as a full member to NATO, will send message not just to Putin, but to his inner circle and to Russians, recognizing that this war is unwinnable mm -hmm. and the West, the free world, is fully behind Ukraine. As of today, I think there is a room of doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and it, it helps Putin because the only chance for him to survive is to win the war of attrition. Mm -hmm. It's uh, counting on a fatigue, yeah. uh, both in Ukraine and in the free world. And God knows what happens next year. Maybe Trump wins primaries. It's a mm -hmm. mess in America. Some European elections, some, you know, right wing uh, nationalist or left wing, you know, tankies, you know, old fashioned tankies, they, they, they gain momentum in Germany, in France, God knows where. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're expecting for. And uncertainty and, 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 and the kind of a fog of war always helps dictators create clarity. And that's the, the, the best message that can be sent by NATO summit. You talk about the thoughts of Russian people. And previously, you've said that Russian attitudes towards the war are only hardening as time goes on. And in fact, you've said that peace would only become an option when the Ukrainian flag is raised above Sevastopol. Do you really think that there's no chance of peace earlier than that? No, because Putin, Putin's power will, will not... Um, uh, uh, go away, you know, uh, uh, as long as uh, Russia, Russian troops can hold the line. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's also a mental problem. So it's, it's the, the Russian society, as we know from history, responds to, to uh, the power abuse only after the loss, geopolitical loss or, or, or major defeat war, uh, at, at war. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything short of Ukrainian victory that includes liberation of the entire Ukrainian territory uh, will send this message. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you know, it will it will be a mess, and, uh, and any any result short of full liberation of Ukraine will help Putin to create uh, again uncertainty. So yes, maybe we have not won the war, but we hold the line. It, by the way, Russia is not fighting Ukraine. If you follow Russian propaganda, it's war against NATO. Mm -hmm. NATO, 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 and and fighting NATO means that you know if you can have a stalemate, you already won. You've just mentioned, obviously, the potential collapse of Russia. Do you think that's something that's likely to happen? And if so, is the West doing enough to prepare for the outcome of that? If one way or another, is going to happen. So, okay. uh, because Russia is an empire, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, there's no room for empires in, in the 21st century. And the, this, the, the war will be won by Ukraine. The question is when and at what cost. Mm -hmm. And longer the war goes on, you know, I believe you know, it will create even more explosive material within Russia that will lead not just to the collapse of Putin's regime, but the collapse of the whole state. Um, I know that many Eastern European nations, they will be delighted to see the Russia splitting in, in, in 10 or 12 or 15 or God knows how many <laughs> states. I don't think it's a it's, it's best scenario because you will have not many democracies, but most of the you know, um, um, local dictatorships, and mm -hmm. some of them will have control of nukes. So the ideal scenario, if we can talk about ideal scenarios, is to, to help Ukraine winning as soon as possible Possible, hoping that there will be kind of, you know, um, a deal between um, Russian elite that not involved in war crimes mm -hmm. and those pro-Western elements in Russian opposition in exile uh, that will lead to some kind of reintegration of Russia into, into um, Euro-Atlantic space. It's wishful thinking, I agree, but the problem is we're not, we're not having a comfortable position of, of choosing, you know, um, um, between, between good and very good. Mm -hmm. It's actually between bad and very bad. And I think, you know, this is instinctively that many Russians, recognizing that the war is over, we lost, uh, empire is dead, 
Ukraine recovered all the territories. Its flag is in, uh, the the yellow blue flag is in Sevastopol, and China is now is just looking, you know, just uh, um, at Russia as 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 a prey. Mm -hmm. So they'll say maybe we have to find a way uh, to get to 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 get back on board with Europeans, with Americans. But again, it requires a plan. It's a strategy. Mm -hmm. So it's and it seems to me now that there is no strategy. The same yeah. strategy as Truman administration came up in in 1946, facing the threat of the Soviet Union, and today I think. It's, it's, it's more about, you know, just um, playing um, tactical game, just responding, being reactive rather than proactive. One last question. Speaking of forward planning, do you think the West is doing enough to prepare for the inevitable reconstruction effort that's going to be needed in Ukraine following the war? There's enough talk about it, and I don't think it will be a major problem because it's, uh, Ukraine is a country with huge potential, mm -hmm. and it has a very vibrant civil society, and I think that's the, the after-war energy, after the victory, I think mm -hmm. we'll... we'll, we'll, we'll propelled Ukraine to the uh, top top tier of the countries. Mm -hmm. uh, it will not be just, you know, uh, dominant military power, but I think it's Ukraine economy and agriculture. They will they will help Ukraine to to uh, go back in business. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest challenge what will happen east of Ukraine, because it will also affect uh, mm -hmm. what what's happening in Ukraine and other countries. And I, you know, I think that's that's time also to start, you know, contemplating what's can be done now to minimize the damage mm -hmm. uh, for geopolitical uh, mm, mm, arrangements that will be caused by inevitable collapse of Putin regime. Mr. Kasparov, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me.